An eight-month pregnant woman went for a prenatal checkup. The physician ordered an ultrasound and found that the baby's small intestines were herniating into the amniotic cavity and bathed in amniotic fluid. The condition was diagnosed as a gastroschisis. This condition is due to the faulty development of... The answer is D, lateral folds. There's several folding problems that are really critical for you to understand for the USMLE Step 1. One is that there's gastroschisis that can be formed or epigastric hernias. These are going to be defective developments of the anterior abdominal wall and the abdominal contents will herniate through these gaps. And they're because of the faulty development of the lateral folding. The small intestines will oftentimes herniate into the amniotic fluid and then this can be detected prenatally by ultrasound and the defect usually occurs on the right side near the median plane of the umbilical cord. Here we're looking at a two possibilities as a result of lateral folding errors. One is the omphalocele and in this case, the omphalocele is a herniation into the umbilical cord, uh, into the umbilical cord allowing the organs to be covered by peritoneum. And that peritoneal membrane in some ways protects the organs. Um, the worse the developmental closure failure is, the more organs that can be in this space, which will include liver and spleen. If you look at the herniations of these, the regular bowel herniation would be 1 in 5,000, but the more rare liver and other organs being enclosed in this would be much rarer at 1 to 10,000. A more serious effect would be a gastroschisis, and in general I would encourage you to remember that anything that ends in schesis is never good. There's an improper closure in a gastroschisis of the anterior abdominal wall, but there's no involvement of the umbilical cord because it's going to go uh, skirting past this on the right side typically and the organs actually herniate out into the amniotic cavity and that amniotic fluid and the exposure that it has uh, it oftentimes damages the organs. It's about as uh, common as the omphalocele uh, and the surgical repair is possible but the recovery is oftentimes longer and there's a very high chance of, of not surviving a serious gastroschisis. A 27-year-old woman delivers healthy twins. One is 7.6 pounds and the other is 7.0 pounds. There's a male and a female. Examination of the placenta will most likely reveal what features. Hopefully you'll recognize this as fraternal twins, so there should be diamnionic, dichorionic membranes. Twinning in general will uh, be a high yield thing for you to understand for your board preparation. Twins can develop in two separate ways. There can be one zygote, which will give you identical twins, or two zygotes, which will give you fraternal twins. The Dizygotic twins will come from the fertilization of two ova by two sperm and resulting twins will be of different sex. This form of twinning can run in families and is increased with the fertility treatments that are oftentimes used. So there's a couple uh, red flag issues that you'll be looking for in the stem of questions about twinning. They always have two amnions and two chorions, although the chorions and the placentas can fuse together and be difficult to distinguish as dizygotic rather than monozygotic. This is of course clarified if there are different sex. Monozygotic twins originate from a single sperm and a single ova and the twins are genetically identical and this type of twinning is not a familial inheritance issue. This is one of chance.